Hello everybody, Photog Nord here. I got uh, two uh, DSLRs with me today. Um, I don't know if you can uh, see the difference between them. Uh, it's actually, uh, they are very similar. similar. Um, one of them is three times as expensive as the other one. Um, one of them was released in late 2005 and the other one in I think late 2008. Actually, I only think this was released late 2008 and I don't know when this was released in 2005. But it was and it's here and it's still here. Uh, it has not decomposed uh, because it's made of uh, uh, metal alloy and plastics and uh, electronics and inside a full frame 12 megapixel awesome sensor. Yes, you guessed it. I'm going to talk about the uh, Canon EOS 5D today. This is my uh, favorite DSLR that I have. I, uh, I've had the 5D, the 5D Mark II, the 5D Mark III and the 6D. Uh, that's a lot of Canon cameras. I'm aware. I'm not a particular uh, uh, Canon enthusiast, um, but somehow uh, I started using uh, Canon back in my early uh, 20s and um, yeah, I've stuck with Canon. Um, so at least for my DSLRs. <sighs> I want to talk about uh, these uh, cameras because I think that there is uh, in the last five to eight years um, I've been a little bit uh, pissed uh, with Canon actually because they keep releasing cameras all the time and uh, I don't really think that uh, the cameras themselves are improved all that much. I think it's a, uh, a selling trick that they uh, keep producing more and more bodies uh, going from 500 and 500D, 550, 600, 650, 700, uh, or the 5D, the 5D Mark II, the 5D Mark III, um, all that stuff. Um, I want to talk about why this camera is a game changer and why it still is a game changer, and even more today than ever before. This is, this is sort of the, uh, I don't know if this is taboo uh, in the... Uh, in the photographic uh, community, but but this is this is a a very very cheap and very very competent uh, fully featured professional level camera that costs about the same and even less than the cheapest um, what Canon calls entry level camera uh, on the market today. Um, so so I think it's. I of course know that there are many other people that know, know this uh, secret uh, that this camera exists, the 5D, and it is still uh, very potent for uh, usage uh, as a photographer today. So if I just remove the 5D Mark II, let's focus on this camera. So as I said, this has the uh, full frame sensor and this is the interesting thing about it. The body is uh, it's a, it's a quality body. Um, it uh, features the, the, all the things you would want as a uh, photographer. Um, it has the PC sync uh, port, it has the uh, hot shoe for flashes, it records on CF card, uh, it uh, features uh, the 8,000th, eight thousandth, I cannot say that, 8, 1, one eight thousandths of a second. That was tough. I'm not going to cut this out. Um, and it has the uh, viewfinder. It has the capability of uh, switching the focus screen for whatever focus screen you would like. And it takes all the lenses, all the uh, um, EF lenses that you would want, um, like the 5D Mark II and 5D Mark III. <clears throat> so uh, why has this camera been forgotten? Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, they are at sale 
um, that they're being sold uh, second hand everywhere you go look um, and they are very cheap um, actually you can buy three Canon ES5Ds for one 5D Mark II and you can buy seven of these for the price of one 5D Mark III and uh, what you get when you buy this camera is absolutely uh, gorgeous image quality. Uh, the 12 megapixel sensor is uh, still very potent. It is uh, uh, by far enough uh, resolution for all sorts of photography um, and all sorts of prints. I doubt that you will make a print where this um, sensor does not deliver enough for the print. Um, of course, it also depends on how close you are to your print. Uh, but uh, billboards and buses and large poster sizes to hang on the wall, it's not a problem. Because you don't stare at the pictures from uh, one inch uh, away. And even if you did, it would still look uh, incredible. So uh, never mind that. Um, all right. So... Um, I have a PowerPoint here, just to help me uh, be, get on, get on, and be on track. So um, <clears throat> one thing I really enjoy about this camera is that it's just a camera. Uh, that's no bullshit. It's uh, it's feels very mechanical. It has no uh, video. It has no live view. It um, you attach the lens and you just go around and just shoot and uh, usually I um, I would just turn off my my uh, display on the back so I don't uh, chimp uh, which I uh, can sometimes do if it brights up um, so uh, the no distraction sort of camera this gives you a complete feel of what it's all about just taking pictures and not uh, thinking all about the, the many menus and the sub-menus and all the uh, focus settings and, 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 and all that crap. I, I usually just uh, shoot raw and then I um, typically use with my sensor focus point and I shoot with my uh, manual lenses and I have uh, all the cool dials here in the back that I need including the little uh, joystick, multi-directional joystick that um, works really well. Um, there's also a screen on the back here. It's not very good. Uh, it's not very high resolution, uh, but that doesn't matter because you can still see your histogram and you can see an overall, get an overall feel if your image is uh, under or overexposed. Uh, last thing for this topic is that I um, I think that it is very nice that this does not feel like um, like a computer to use. Uh, when you press the shutter, it uh, takes the picture, but of course so does all the other models of, uh, of the 5D series. All right, the next thing, as I said, you cannot beat the price of this camera. So it uh, costs about the same thing as the cheapest uh, camera that Canon releases today as new. If you buy this used, um, and um, it, um, you can buy three of these for one 5D Mark II, and you can buy seven of these for one 5D Mark III. So uh, what actually happened uh, when the 5D Mark II came out and people went crazy is that the uh, 5D Mark II featured a, about twice the resolution uh, on the sensor, uh, higher ISO capabilities and uh, video. Video was the main thing about this. This was the uh, the first um, full frame uh, video capturing DSLR, and this was the uh, first full frame uh, DSLR. I think it was. Don't shoot me uh, if it wasn't, um, or hate me for that matter. So these are like uh, first movers. It's like very innovative, very innovative. 5D Mark III, not so much. It was like the entire community uh, bought a 7D and a 5D Mark II and uh, we want it merged. 
and they got the 5D Mark III, and, and everyone, everybody was still disappointed uh, anyway. So that is why the 7D is still so popular, and also the 5D Mark II is very popular. But um, uh, what you need to think about if you are going out to buy a camera is what, how are you going to use the camera? What are your requirements? Because what I think is that most people suffer from gas. Uh, as you know, that is the gear acquisition syndrome, and you sit on DP review, or you uh, look at YouTube video videos, reviews at cameras, look at all the features. Oh, it's got weather sealing, it's got in-body stabilization, it's got uh, um, all these cool things. Um, uh, smaller, lighter cameras, uh, whatever. But, but what you really need to think about is how are you going to use this uh, DSLR because um, I take all sorts of pictures and this 5D, the original one, is, is by far um, uh, more than I need. Um, because let's take, for instance, let's take uh, portraits. I shoot a lot of portraits. Uh, how do I do that? Well, I uh, I use lights. So 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 for starters, many people worry about the ISO capabilities. Oh, this lets in uh, so much more light. Or oh, no, it doesn't. It uh, it's so much more sensitive than uh, this one is. Um, but but does that really matter? Uh, for instance, let's say that you went out and bought a medium format camera. Would you shoot above ISO 400 or 800? I don't think you would. Uh, so think about the 5D as a medium format camera. Um, uh, the reason I say ISO 800 is because this is what I think is the uh, uh, the limit of uh, where you have um, yeah the best compromise between grain and uh, image quality. Um, you can of course go above that, but I would say uh, ISO 800 is uh, where you want to stay at and below. And uh, the grain on this, uh, actually, or the digital noise, actually looks really nice on this camera uh, because of the larger sensor. It has larger uh, pixels and uh, the grain, uh, I will call it grain, it looks uh, very much nicer, uh, I think, than the higher megapixel uh, sensors. So uh, think about that. This is uh, a medium format camera or ISO 800 film max. Uh, it's not a problem. If you're going to shoot uh, uh, in studios or with uh, lights, stuff like that, you probably won't go uh, above ISO uh, 100 or 200 or 300 or 160, uh, 320, 640, whatever religion you are into about the uh, ISO settings, um, but but uh, think about it. Uh, what what is your requirements for the camera? Because this will shoot absolutely amazing uh, images, um, and it has beautiful uh, skin color. Um, everything about this image quality. Go into Flickr, take a look at all the pictures that uh, people put out. Uh, that is from the uh, original 5D compared to the 5D Mark II, Mark III, any other camera, uh, 35 millimeter, uh, and you will see that this this just produces wonderful pictures. I will also uh, put out some pictures um, for this video on my blog where you can see um, the uh, difference between the 5D Mark II and the uh, 5D. All right. So, uh, beside portraits, uh, I've used this uh, camera for uh, wedding photography. Uh, in, indoors, I've been shooting ISO 800, and um, when I don't use flash, I use my, uh, my uh, fast prime lenses on this camera. And uh, uh, remember that, that, that you can buy a, a 50 millimeter 1.2 L lens or 85 millimeter 1.2 L lens or whatever you want uh, together with this camera uh, and you will pay a, a, a little more than you would just for the body of the 5D and still have no lens. So, so 
put some quality glass on this and uh, it does not really matter that you cannot go uh, those two stops higher on the ISO from ISO 800 to 600 to 3200 you can just put a, a 1.2 glass on this and you have the same capabilities as this glass at uh, ISO uh, uh, 2 uh, at the, a 2.0 aperture um, so, so, and we all know that most lenses, cheaper lenses, are at least uh, from aperture 2.8 and above. Uh, and the, the, the cheaper uh, zooms and stuff like that, that's at least 2.8 or 3.5, something like that, and up to 5.6. So what are you really missing out on buying this one with a 1.2 lens? And it doesn't need to be 1.2, it can be 1.4. The, the cheap 50mm uh, 1.4 from Canon on this body. That is what I have used for, 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 for weddings. Uh, and it looks really, really great. All right, that was a little bit about ISO. Uh, don't be scared about uh, the low uh, acceptable ISO limit of 800. Buy a faster glass. Um, enjoy the grain. All that. All right. Um, uh, another thing uh, that I think people worry about is the um, is the old technology, but uh, but the technology is so old and uh, crabby, and and uh, I think it'll break soon. Uh, what's the shot account? Uh, well, who cares uh, that it's old technology? It works. It looks beautiful. This is a tool. Uh, take one in your hand, take pictures, they will come into your computer, they will look really nice. Um, yeah, the camera will break at some point, but this hasn't. I don't even know what the shutter count is. I just bought this and I've shot thousands of, thousands of images with this camera. And when it breaks, well, I will either have it repaired or I will go buy a new one because they are still uh, very available and um, they are very cheap. But I don't think they will be forever. That's my next point. Let me just reset the camera. Okay, so uh, what do I mean about um, uh, uh, that they are still cheap? I think that people will start to uh, open their eyes and notice this camera and then will, they will start to just buy several of these. Uh, one person thinking about buying the, the 5D Mark II or Mark III, Mark III might just go out and, and purchase three of these. Uh, just to have two as backups because uh, you don't even uh, need to worry about uh, the shot shutter actuations or uh, anything you just have I have yeah then you just have three bodies if uh, this one doesn't work you don't want to repair it um, well then uh, actually you should repair it because it's uh, maybe uh, money wise it can't always uh, how do you say pay itself it's not a good deal but then uh, you can have good conscience that you had just didn't throw this piece out uh, as trash um, because uh, everything pollutes, so prepare your camera if you have the money. Uh, if you don't, then, um, then don't. Um, all right. Um, so, yeah, about the pricing uh, going down, I think this has hit a plateau. This camera has cost the same uh, for the last two, three years maybe, and uh, it's such a good camera that the people who actually bought this know that it should not cost less than what it's sold for uh, today, uh, meaning that they would probably rather throw the camera out than selling it cheaper uh, than what it is. And when they see that people uh, open their eyes and, 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 and find this camera, uh, also, the, the whole new segment of young users uh, who wants to go into full-frame photography uh, are going to find this camera uh, and they will start purchasing it. That is my thought. So the price will go up. So you can also think of this as an investment. Um, I know nothing about investments and I'm just speculating here. But uh, even though if you just buy it and you regret buying it, you will be able to sell it for the same price. Uh, again, don't worry about that.
Okay, so um, I'm praising this camera a lot. It has some caveats. I have a I have two uh, cameras. I have the 5D Mark II and I have the 5D. And the reason is that I have the 5D Mark II is um, actually not because of the video, um, because uh, actually I, I, I tend not to use it for video because I cannot flip out the screen and I have a bad back. Um, so, um, so, and I shoot at, at picture size. I, I shoot my, my children uh, at the... Um, the height of children, so uh, so what I need to do is is like carry it like this on the lens and then look at the screen. And uh, I could of course uh, use my uh, my video rig and put on a monitor and all that stuff, but I I don't really do that when I just need to uh, to film my kids here at home or when we go somewhere. I will uh, mostly use my iPhone. Um, but what this does have is the uh, high resolution um, screen on the back and this is very important uh, because it also features live view uh, meaning that I can zoom in uh, 10 times on this camera and I need this when I uh, when I shoot um, portraits for instance and I use a very uh, shallow depth of field I really need to go in that uh, 10 times to see where my focus is at I have I can hit the mark with this one, but I hit the mark uh, three times more accurately with the uh, ten time magnification than I do with the uh, the five d so so this is one thing you have to know is that it's uh, even though I have the precision uh, focus screens in both cameras, it can be hard to uh, to uh, you know like uh, capture the eye. And I have the eye in focus, the iris, and not the, the eyelashes. Uh, you, you, you don't see that on the screen uh, if, you, if you can zoom in, for instance. And, and the screen on this one is not good enough to be absolutely sure that you have focus where you want the focus. So uh, that is one thing that you should be aware of, where the uh, Mark II actually uh, does have... Uh, a rather big improvement over the uh, 5D. So, so, so when I shoot portraits uh, with a shallow depth of field, I will uh, tend to use my 5D just to be sure. But this is this is actually only when I have uh, a shot that I need to be sure is is all right the first time. For instance, with customers, um, if it's my family or kids or which is part of my family, so family, friends, whatever. Um, I I will shoot with the 5D because I like the, the pictures, the aesthetics of the pictures coming out of this camera a lot more than the, the 5D Mark II. Um. All right, um, another thing to worry about with the uh, 5D or you might worry about is uh, shooting tethered or using uh, the Canon utilities, all that stuff. Uh, it is a bit harder to get to work on the 5D um, than the 5D Mark II. The 5D Mark II is still supported, but the 5D is not. So if you, uh, if you use uh, the current version of uh, Canon EOS utilities and, and all the tethering tools and all that, it will not work out of the box. And it's not supported on Mac, uh, on the newer Mac OS X uh, operating system. So you will have to do some uh, workarounds to get this to work. Um, I will do a later podcast, uh, later YouTube video on how I shoot tethered uh, with this uh, camera. Because when you shoot tethered with this camera, to uh, I shoot it to my MacBook Pro over here, I can see if I got that focus. Um, but it's not always I use my uh, my laptop for that. But it, it can be done, and I will show you in, a, in another video. Um, da, da, da. So, how am I on time? Ba, ba, ba. By the way, I'm recording audio on my Rode lavalier mic and the uh, Rode 
app, I think this works really good. My levels are also good. And video today is being recorded on my uh, Fuji X100. I think I shoot at, at a F4 ISO 3200. Um, and the shutter speed is uh, on automatic. Um, I hope it's okay. Just as you were wondering, I'm just going to reset the camera again and um, let's get on with the, the next topic, which is uh, gas. All right. We talked about the 5D, all the things I like about the 5D, all the things that might scare you about the 5D, and I don't think that there should be anything to be scared of. Uh, one of the big main reasons to get the uh, 5D Mark II is, of course, the live view. If you uh, end, if you shoot film, that's the uh, video, that's the video capabilities. And um, that's about it. Uh, the higher resolution sensor enables you to crop images more tightly. Um, but uh, yeah, why don't you instead just practice on uh, getting most of what you want in the frame and, and you won't have that issue. So uh, think about it. Think what, what is it that you need. Do you really need the Mark II? Um, do you really need the Mark III? Um, and and um, just very briefly, the Mark III, oh, it's a fantastic camera, costs a lot of money. It does everything you want except uh, make your coffee. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, you could buy that if you have the money and you just don't care. But do you really need it? I don't think so. Um, I don't know if you do, but if you're watching this video and you are still in doubt, if you're going into full frame, just want to have a different sensor and see how it looks, uh, try not buying the uh, latest model. Try buying this one. It won't hurt you. You can just sell it again and buy the 5D Mark III or the 6D or the 1D, uh, the one with the full, fr full frame sensor. Um, it's all up to you, but I'm just saying... Uh, why do it if, if you can buy a, a used camera? Uh, it's so much cooler to have a used camera and still be able to produce um, mind-blowing images um, because you probably do. And, uh, and uh, it's like buying a 5D Mark III, taking pictures that look like crap. That's a total fail. Uh, that's like, eh. Uh, but getting a 5D and, uh, and, 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 and shoot great images, it's like, then you're really rocking. Think about it that way, it's like, it's a bit of a challenge uh, to, uh, you just need to get to know the limitations of the camera and work within that framework of those limitations and then produce something wonderful with this tool, because it can be done. When this came out, uh, the photographers that uh, bought this camera were shooting crazy cool pictures. It was like, oh, it was the wildest thing. So just because time has passed uh, and it's no longer 2005 doesn't mean that this isn't able to produce just as, as, as great images um, as in 2005. And remember, uh, it's not all about megapixels. It's like, look at the Sony uh, and the new A7S uh, camera. Uh, that will be coming soon. It's, it's also 12 megapixels. Yeah, I know it can uh, uh, shoot at a lot higher ISO, but if you forget about that, it's still a 12 uh, megapixel sensor. Um, yeah, so, so realize uh, within yourself if your problem uh, is that you perhaps have gas, uh, if you don't think that this camera can be enough for you. Um, I think that you should definitely give it give it a try because I think it will you will be very happy about this camera. And if you are not happy about the pictures that come out of this camera, I would say that it is probably not the camera's fault, um, unless that you have some some uh, very specific requirements. Um, but I don't know what they should be because people took the same pictures as you do today. 2005 and they did it in the 1950s 50s and 30s and it happened you know 
there's a lot of really great sports photography from the uh, from when you see those um, baseball players uh, running into base and all that stuff. Uh, do you think they had uh, 69 autofocus points and uh, high speed lenses and, and all? No, they didn't. They were just good at their craft, good photographers. They uh, they practiced and, and and they got the good pictures. So um, think about it. Think about it. Will will it help you or will it take focus away from getting to be a better photographer with uh, the limitations of the camera? Um, all right, that is what I had planned to tell you about the uh, the five Ds. I. Um, on a more personal level, I will tell you that I, I am done buying uh, uh, cameras from uh, Canon, but I still have mine and I will use these until they uh, don't function anymore or until I sell them. I have uh, some lenses also which, which I have paid a lot more for than I have for my cameras. And, um, and um, yeah, I'm really happy about these cameras, but I'm not really happy about the, the strategy that that Canon has these days where they are just pumping out new cameras all the time and they are not uh, very uh, uh, they are not uh, first movers anymore their cameras are uh, below par on what you see from the other manufacturers for instance uh, Fuji or Panasonic or um, Sony I think Sony uh, has got a really good thing going there so I will be. I'm thinking about buying a um, a camera with video capabilities with a flip out screen. Um, so, um, but that will not be the 70D uh, or the 70 Mark II if that has a uh, flip out screen. But um, I'm thinking about going into Panasonic or. Uh, I don't know about the Fuji. I'm a I'm a Fuji lover. I have my X100 recording right now, um, but the Fuji are not very much into video, and I I'm not sure how the uh, the X Pro2 is going to uh, look um, and and do video. So the Panasonic or the Sony perhaps for video. Um, let's see. So um, I have probably forgotten a lot of things, so I will just uh, drink some more coffee, think about it, and I will uh, uh, edit uh, what I have forgotten in. Thanks for watching. I hope this really helped. I hope I can uh, help you to save a lot of money on uh, buying cameras, so instead you can uh, buy uh, quality lenses. Uh, buy quality lenses always. But if you don't want to use autofocus, look into other brands like uh, Voigtlander, uh, like uh, Carl Zeiss, um, or just... Uh, yeah, whatever you, you want to. Try them on, buy an adapter, uh, forget about autofocus uh, for a while. Um, and if not, buy uh, the, the, the best glass you can find. But try to find it uh, used. Uh, you can sometimes get it for half the price. Uh, and it's glass that will uh, last your lifetime or as long as your camera is available. So... Um, Use your money on light uh, or use natural light. Uh, buy some, uh, some studio flashes uh, for the money that you save from uh, buying a, a less expensive camera uh, because it's, it's, it's mostly about the quality of glass and the quality of light that actually will uh, have the biggest effect on the quality of your pictures. You can take the most expensive uh, DSLR camera and uh, if you shoot in crappy uh, light conditions, your pictures will look like crap. So uh, I would invest the other way around. First, I would, um, if I do uh, studio photography, uh, I would buy some good lights, and um, then I would buy some good glass, and then I would upgrade my camera if that was necessary. Um, actually, um, yeah. Actually, if you can avoid buying camera gear, that's that's uh, not avoid avoid it. But buying all the new stuff, do that and use your money for something else. Um, go travel, go shoot pictures uh, of exotic places, 
spend time with your family, uh, travel somewhere, use some extra money. Um, this is just a camera. It's just a tool, and it um, it doesn't bring any value uh, to your experience as a photographer because you know once you go down the, the the gear acquisition syndrome road and you buy the new 5D Mark III and you buy the Mark IV, then in two years time you will buy the Mark V and and on and on and on, and and this is just this is just a uh, a never ending circle that just proves that you um, does not you have not attained the mindset yet of what is really important and what photography probably is to you is is more about uh, getting the gear handling the gear using the gear trying all the new technologies which i can totally understand but that is something uh, entirely different than uh, becoming a better photographer um, and I also genuinely believe that the longer you have one camera, the more confident you will be with that camera and, and probably also great, get greater pictures, even though there is a, a newer model with more specs. How am I on time? Oh, I'm over time, so my video stopped.